I say, let's get into it. Let's talk the Potomac fight because I haven't had a chance to discuss this with anybody yet. So let's start with that. Why let's, don't you kind of break it down? Okay. So, well, this Potomac fight, I think maybe we should just play the clip of the fight first and see what everybody thinks. Here we go. We'll play the clip. Okay, so I was wondering, like, what the hell is going on in this clip, right? Because we don't know yet. Nobody's answering what's going on. But they ended up coming out on reality blurb and speaking a little bit about this. Apparently, do you remember Deborah, the one who's down in the bottom who Candace was calling Sesame Street? How could I forget? <laughs> okay, well, her and Wendy Osefo's friend, Kiana, who is now joining the cast, the fight was between them. And they were saying that this was like an all out knockout, like brawl. And Deborah ate Kiana up before this video began to start, like, begun to start recording and they were saying Deborah and Candace had been talking shit about each other all night and then finally Candace was confronting Deborah about what she's been saying about her husband Chris Bassett and then this Kiana woman who's the newbie just walked up and got herself involved and she's like you know what I'm gonna get my champagne flute I'm gonna get my cherry blossom I'm gonna ream your ass I'm like okay Kiana come on come through yeah I mean I don't know Kiana but we do know Deborah. I mean, what we know of her last season is she is messy. She is thirsty. I, if it, you know, looking at it right now without knowing Kiana, I think it's all Deborah. I think Deborah came on the show last season ready to stir shit up. And she's doing that once again here. I mean, she's coming for Candace and she is, I don't know, she's messy. So if I had to guess, I think it's on Deborah. I also think that Deborah might have, come, you know, come back with a little bit of a vendetta because you know how the housewives always say like, she by Sheree, she's like, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not called she by Sheree. Like I'm walking through, you know, the mall and somebody's like, she by Sheree, how could I let it go? People remind me every day. Like, do people just follow Deborah around Potomac and be like, hey, Sesame Street? You know what I mean? Yeah. She's probably proud to wear that, um, seeing as she wasn't known before, and now she's at least known by something. So to me, it's giving desperate. It's giving thirsty. I mean, just knowing her track record, this woman is bad news. She is trying to insert herself into the drama, stay relevant on the show. So I really think that's all that this is. Right. And then also, I've had multiple conversations with Candace and Chris Bassett. And at first, you know, watching them on TV, you form your opinions and you see some of the mess, right? Well, after meeting them at BravoCon and talking about some of the videos that I did that weren't in their favor and just understanding like their side, we had a great conversation. And I really grew to like Chris and Candace. And one thing that I learned from it that Jason and I, my husband, we were able to appreciate was they have each other's back. Like through it, they're like, listen, before filming, like we're about to go into this new season. It's you and I, us first, this marriage first and everybody else like, let's go eat. It's dinner time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? I had the same takeaway after BravoCon. I had a short conversation with them both as well. And they totally just... I've always been a Candace fan, but after BravoCon, I am Candace 100%, Team Candace. She can do no wrong in my eyes. And I know that there's some people in the comments saying that Candace is the common denominator in these fights. But let's be real. I mean, Monique's the one that's not on the show anymore. Candace is still on the show. She brings the drama, but I don't think she's one to start the physical altercations. Maybe she's really, you know, pushing people's buttons and, you know, it causes them to like totally lose their shit. But um, I don't know. I'm team Candace all the way. But I also still wonder, which that's an interesting take. And I appreciate your honesty too, because a lot of people wouldn't come on and be like, I'm team Candace, because they might think that that could present a problem. Like, are you defending somebody who might be deemed as the common denominator? But for Candace, part of me wonders, every new season, when you bring on a newbie like Deborah or Kiana or anyone else, when you bring them on, they've seen the other seasons. They're doing their homework. They see you have a short fuse. They see you have the ability to pop off. 
they see they can get to you if they really want to, and they can get that reaction. So is she now making herself a target by giving the reaction? So then the other girls are like, oh, I'm about to get my moment. Oh, yes, 100%. I mean, that's the issue with these newbies. It's like, we can see right through them. We can see if you're like trying too hard, if you're being too thirsty, if you're, you know, just popping off when really it's like not that big of a deal. So I don't know. I am interested to see this play out and see or learn more kind of what went down to cause this then I will make my decision. But right now it's just two newbies getting in a fight. It's, it's seeming thirsty, honestly. Oh no, it was my, sorry. I just hope it's a little bit more important of a fight when we get down to it, when we start breaking it down than it was between Rachel and Danielle. You know what I mean? Like, because that just felt like, Oh, what are we doing? You guys, are we dragging yeah. this out? So yeah. Kiana, no, if we're I agree stepping completely. in and we're dragging Deborah, just make sure we have a reason, girl. I agree. I agree. Let's not, you know, uh, it. it's just, yeah, rat, calling somebody a rat wasn't really, you know, a strong enough reason to really take it that far. No, it wasn't a season's worth of storyline, for sure. Nope. No. Okay. All right. Now, panning over, we're going to pair Real Housewives of Potomac with our other show that's not currently on until this Sunday, which would be The Real Housewives of New York. And we had a premiere this week. So okay. excited. They all looked amazing. Um, I mean, I think Bryn is stealing the show, honestly. I mean, wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know what's so funny is I thought Uba was going to be the one who was going to steal the show. And we're, it's still so early to tell, right? But of we're course, going based of off of just like seeing like the little quirky tidbits into their personalities. And Bryn just gives me like Sonia, but like in her 20s, 30s of, I don't care. Like, are you watching Welcome to Crappy Lake? Of course, of course. Sonia walks into the bar like, <laughs> like, hello, I'm here. That is what Bryn is giving me. But just like a little bit more fresh. She's of course, a little bit more young. She's beautiful. And I'm like, oh, you guys might have got this one right. And the tagline. I mean, the tagline. What is it? Like, you'll make me mad. Don't make me mad. I'll date your dad or something like that. Like, I need more details. <laughs> like, whose dad is she dating? Like, is it a cast member's dad? Does she Is she just known for dating dads in New York? Like, I don't know. Did Oh, I didn't even think about that. That has to derive from somewhere. I know because the taglines, you know, always kind of speak to what their storyline is on the show. So like, I have a feeling that we're going to see a storyline play out that she's dating somebody's dad. And I am really here for it, honestly. Oh my God. We were talking right before this downstairs as we were piecing together for everything for hot, messy topics. And I was like, I wonder if she wanted to say in that tagline because you know how producers and the execs go back and forth with them and they're like uh, no or maybe sure I wonder if she wanted to say don't make me mad or I'll sleep with your dad and they were like okay maybe that's pushing it just a little bit yeah yeah and I think um if I remember on Instagram you know Andy was asked who was like the messiest housewife of the season or maybe even at the party I don't know and he said Bryn so honestly she is the early favorite you know she's coming out on social media and and doing some fun videos and stuff so I am excited most excited for Bryn of course I'm also excited for Jenna Lyons you know we know her she has a reputation in the fashion industry so yeah I am counting down the days I cannot wait well I agree with you and that's going to be this Sunday but he did at the premiere he said reinventing Roni wow how do you do that what a task how to reboot a show with a legacy as brilliant as The Real Housewives of New York and with a group of all-stars who really made the show what it was. And the answer seems simple. Just find a new group of women. No biggie. So he's joking about this. And he said, guess what? We found the right group of women. Now, this is the thing when it comes to this. We get a lot of promises about new casts, about reunions. Oh, this season, you guys. The next season is going to be the most explosive or watch until the end because the Vanderpump Rules cast is not signing their contracts until part three airs because we don't know if they're going to sign after that. It's like sometimes we get these teasing moments so you really just got to figure it out for yourself. 